So this morning we're actually we're talking about relationships still, and we're this, we're digging into friendships this morning. So uh, you know, if you've got a friend, I'm sure most people here have a friend, uh, maybe even just one. Uh, congratulations, welcome to the club, the friendship club. You know, it's it's nice to be able to know that you do have friends. And and as we've been digging into this series about relationships, we are talking about uh, the different types of relationships that exist, the good, the bad, and the ugly of all of it, and what it looks like to have. What was your saying? Uh, relationship don't let the, ship the relationship sink. don't let it sink and okay, and we want to we want to make sure Sometimes. that as we approach relationships up. not only within our families within our homes within our friend groups in our community in the church in Christianity in Christendom as we approach friendships and relationships we want to approach them uh, from a biblical standpoint and we also want to uh, address and deal with and figure out how to avoid the pitfalls that come along with a lot of what we experience in relationships now, uh, you know, we, we've got a, a bunch that we're going to be covering in the future here as well. We're going to be talking about marriages. We're going to talk, be talking about the dating portion for all the players out there, as we discussed earlier. In the, if you missed that, Whoa. if you missed that, you need to rewind on your VCR, and you can rewatch what we talked about. Um, just, just make sure you don't tape over that episode. Of don't tape over that episode. It's pretty good. So... Um, Nobody knows what that means. We're going to talk about single life, too. What We're going to talk mean? about the single life, all the single ladies. Uh, hash, sorry, hashtag. Side note. Um, there are... <laughs> hashtag what? Hashtag single, single ladies. ladies. Hashtag single ladies. Put it in the comments section. If you want to meet section. a good lady, just come to church. Uh, you know, we've got... A, we have a plethora. That is right. A plethora. A cornucopia. Of, it's almost Thanksgiving, so I can say that. Of uh, single men in the church uh, who are really, you know, looking for some solid single, single lady. <laughs> all the single ladies over here are like, where's the men? Where the, where's, where's all the single men? Uh, we there's, want, a, there's one back there. There's, the red hat. Yeah, there's one back there. Very eligible bachelor, actually, with uh, the red hat on back there. You can send your, uh, you can send your resumes. Oh, and there's his laugh. <laughs> you can send your resumes to me, and I'll vet them for him, and we'll deal with an arranged marriage type of situation, okay? I feel like there's going to be no <laughs> sermon right. this morning. It's just going to be. Okay, sorry, no, back no. to so we're gonna, friendship. So anyway, we're dealing with, we're dealing with relationships. And, and what's cool is it, we wanted to be able to uh, bring a panel together, not just have, you know, Maria or myself speaking about it. We, a cornucopia. That's right, Tanisha. <laughs> uh, we want to be able to have a, a, a group involved in some of these discussions because the reality is, is what my perspective might be or what Maria's perspective might be perhaps is different than other people's perspective. And in Christianity, even though we have unity, we also have diversity in that. And that's the beauty of being a part of the church, um, Big C Church, right? There is incredible unity, even in the midst of diversity. And so our approach to things, even though it might be appropriate and, and right for our circumstance and situation, perhaps other people have experienced things that um, uh, work for them. And at the end of the day, we always want to make sure that we are anchoring uh, our, our understanding back to the Word of God. Always, always, no matter or what. But how, how we walk through that might be a little bit different. So that's why we want to have a panel up here and discuss some of these things and really get into the subject matter at hand. So we're talking about relationships. Today we are nailing down friendships. And what's really cool is if you, if you dig into the Bible and, uh, and you want to learn a bit about friendships, maybe you've had uh, good or bad or challenging or wonderful friendships in your life, and you want to dig into what are friendships all about, there's a couple of passage, or a couple of books in the Bible you can dig into that are awesome. So you can go to Proverbs, and you can go to the book of Job. If you've got a pen and paper, if you've got your thing that you do the stuff on. Um, you Has know, it been that long since you've had a I smartphone? Don't even, I don't even know how to. I don't to, know what it's called. I'm like T9-ing everything up here because that's all I can do. Nobody knows what that means. Um, so if you want to dig into a couple of books in the Bible that really actually deal with, with wisdom surrounding friendship, uh, are Pro the books are Proverbs and Job. So Proverbs in general is just pure gold. I mean, you dig into that book, there's so much meat and potatoes there that get you started in the foundations, not only of your faith, but it gets you started in the foundations of what wisdom and walking in wisdom truly is. There is wisdom in that book. The other one is Job, and Job is really cool because it paints a picture of what it, is lo what it looks like to go through horrendous challenge, incredible loss, more than we can ever possibly perceive, yet still in the midst of it have people around you and even when you don't have people around you what it looks like to turn to God in the midst of the challenges so I'd encourage you to dig into both those books um, you know they are great to read while you're in the bathtub uh, they're great to read while you are not going for a drive but uh, maybe as a passenger in a vehicle they're great to read while you are getting ready to go to bed at night uh, really good stuff to stick to 
But when we talk about friendship, or I actually have a few questions I'm going to ask for, for our panel today uh, and dig into some of these things. But when we talk about friendship, it's important to remember that a, a real friend, a true friend, isn't someone who just covers up your faults or, or makes a decision to just, um, you know, lie to people around you to support maybe the delusion that you're living in. A true friend actually reveals these things in love so that you can grow and you can be nurtured and you can be encouraged and you can actually be better on the other side of it. And, and Proverbs actually speaks about that in spades. It's amazing to see how that's discussed. And, and we often... When it comes to friendship, we often share so much of ourselves with the world around us. If you've got Facebook, put your hand up. Yeah, oh yeah, everybody's got it. Instagram, yeah, Instagram. You need to put your hand down. You don't anymore. Oh, I don't, I don't. Uh, Oh, what's the other one? The snap, uh, Snapchat. Snapchat. If you got the the Snapchat, you can, yeah, excellent. This is where our daughters, specifically the oldest one, size. It's like, I don't have Snapchat. I'm not allowed to have Snapchat. she's not allowed to have Snapchat. What's the other one? The big one. What is it? Ping pong. Tick tock, ping pong, <laughs> the ping ping. Do you have the ping? Do you have the ping pong? Ping yeah. pong. Do you got the ping pong? TikTok. If you got the ping pong, uh, <laughs> I've never. I know. I've never actually seen a TikTok video except for what my daughters have shown me. Okay. What's wrong with me? That's okay. Continue. You're not okay. missing much. Let's continue. I'm not missing much. It's everybody trying to do the same dance. I think is how it was supposed to work. Um, so we we share a lot of our we share a lot of ourselves, right? We share a lot of ourselves in the online world, in the digital world, in, in social media. We share so much of ourselves. And, and think about yourself as something precious, okay? Imagine that you are a pearl or a, or a portion of gold. And then if you go and you distribute that or bust it up or break it up and hand it out to every single person, suddenly you've taken something that is of great value, of incredible worth and importance, and then suddenly it's cheapened. It's cheapened because now everybody has a bit of it, so who cares? Let that sink in for a minute. And you can actually apply that to so many portions of your life. But when it comes to friendship, that is actually not the intention for friendship. In the online world, we have so many friends or followers or people who, uh, you know, bolster us. We surround ourselves with people who share the same opinions with us and, and nurture perhaps even bad behaviors in our lives. Yet the reality is, is are those, I guess the question asked today is, is that real friendship? Is what we see in our online communities or our digital selves, perhaps our avatars, are those, are those reflections of real, actual, real friendships? Or are we cheapening the value of who we are? Are we lessening our worth because of how we are distributing portions of ourselves all over the place? We, we have hundreds of people, or even thousands of people that we divulge our lives to that we bring into our sacred personal spaces. And and what happens is is we go down a dangerous road where we suddenly don't realize what it is to actually have intimate moments with people because we've been so broken from the intimacy we've shared to a platform that doesn't even care about you. What does it look like to have a close friend? I think it takes up a lot of your time too. When you think about how much time you're putting into um, social media, it's like a false sense of community. It's a false sense of relationship. And so you feel like, like your mind thinks that, okay, I'm connecting with people. I'm, you know, I've got people in my life but there's still an emptiness, Mm. there's still a loneliness. And I think people wrestle with why do I still have this loneliness even though I am connected to all these people. Uh, And I think because you're like, just what you're saying, it cheapens that that depth of intimacy that you have with with someone when you have a false sense of a relationship. Yeah, do you guys want to weigh in on that at all? Kind of. Please. There's a, this is just, okay, this is just my mind running rampant and I just thought of this now, I'm not prepared. Mm -hmm. But, I was, so what you guys are saying basically is that there's a cultural difference between uh, what the Bible says a friendship is and what we have accepted as a friendship. You know what I'm saying? Like when you work in the same cubicle as somebody, you feel like you automatically have to become friends with that where they might have standards that are, you know, not going to challenge you or actually going to drag you down that you shouldn't, you know, be friends with that person. But so what I was actually going to say is that when I was at the gym, I have a lot of these gym parables. I was talking to my coach, and, uh, and he, was, he said something that, that was interesting to me. He said that if people come and they have like an easy workout, 
and they don't feel like they're, you know, going to die tomorrow, they, they actually won't come back. For some reason, there's like this mentality of if you're not being challenged, you don't go deep and you don't actually come back. And I've actually seen it time and time again. People who come, they do their own thing, they don't go challenged, and then they actually don't return, and so therefore they don't progress. And I think that's the same thing that we do with our friendships, right? Because a friend is somebody who can challenge you, who can draws things out of you in love, though it might hurt, like, uh, like you're saying Proverbs, Proverbs 27, 6, um, was it, is that you can, I've got it, you want me to read you, it? You actually have it? Yeah, because I was actually going to say it. Maybe. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It says, wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses, uh, and the one right before it says, better is open rebuke than hidden love. Right, so there's this action in so friendship good. that is at times supposed to not feel great. It's supposed to, to be hard. It's chafing, it's right? Ch- and then that's, actually where the depth comes in yeah absolutely yeah. so that that was it's good that's good yeah. man i like that and from like the social media standpoint too like you, you don't grasp that actual real relationship because it's all through a screen it's all through you know wavelengths and things like that so like being able to like actually go forward with a relationship with someone over like social media like you only see the good side of things a lot on social media mm. and there's actually some that I follow on Instagram one of their bios says I'm also here and I'm also fake happy and I'm like oh that's actually like really sad because so say that again I'm also here and I'm, I'm also, also here but I'm also fake happy because mm. let's be honest like if you're scrolling through Instagram or Facebook well I think Facebook you see a lot more of the the bad things, I guess you can the say. The ranting. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. But, like, with Instagram, everyone kind of knows, like, you see the videos, you see the pictures. Everyone's always so happy, and they're in California, or they're somewhere hot and sunny, and life is so good. But, like, how can you, how can you like, maintain a relationship when all you see is the good? That's good, Josh. Right? That's good, Josh. And it's true. That, that's the reality, right? Like, there isn't, there isn't a depth there. It's, it's shallowness. And... Our friendships, especially when we look at friendships from a biblical perspective, our friendships are, are, are those that we can actually go deep with. The people that see us in the most horrendous of times. You know, I, I love in Romans 5, 8, it's, and, and you've probably heard me say this a thousand times, but it says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And the way that I like to interpret that is, he loved me at my darkest. He loved me at my darkest. It also says in the scriptures that Jesus was a friend to sinners. Jesus is a friend to sinners. And that means that even in the the depth of our depravity and our brokenness, while we are trying to run from him and do everything we can to hide ourselves from him, he knows us. He still knows us even when we try to push him away. He is there for us. He actually sees into us And he sees the value that is in our life, and he has such a depth of compassion and care and passion for it, even while we are still running the other direction from him. That is a friendship that that I don't know if, if on this earth we understand how to model that. That's supposed to actually be a picture of marriage, and I think often we don't see that in marriage. We don't see husbands treating their wives that way. We don't see wives coming alongside their husbands that way. And we see a brokenness in our world because our world is tainted. We don't understand the depth of what friendship and relationship really is. Ben, back to what you said there about your gym, and I love this. Ben's gym, this is a big shout out to Ben, the Bent gym Ben goes to. The Ben gym. Ben gym in. Ben gym. Ben gym. It was, it was a, there all along. It was a reach. Yeah. It was a reach. Um, you know, they have, they have shirts there. Um, it's at Rev Fitness, and they got shirts, and on the back of the shirt, it just says in big letters, iron sharpens iron. And uh, it says in Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one friend sharpens another. Now, I don't know if the gym grasps the reality of what's on the back of that, those shirts, but the truth is, is that like iron sharpens iron, one friend sharpens another. And if you are introducing people into your lives that actually aren't challenging you, that actually aren't coming against you and sharpening you, are they actually there for you? Or are they just soothsayers? Are they just there to, have you collected people in your life that are simply there to uh, make you feel good about your horrible decisions that you're currently making? 
Yeah, there's an interesting thing. I had that actually open, and then you said it in Proverbs there. Oh. Iron sharpening iron. There's an interesting piece is that the reason that iron can sharpen iron is because it's the same substance. Mm. Like, and so the reason that iron can sharpen iron is because it actually has the same density to it. Otherwise, if you're trying to be sharpened by something that is a softer substance, it's not going to work. Mm. And if you try and sharpen something that is a softer substance, you're actually going to destroy it. And so I think it actually talks about the need for not that all of your friendships need to be those that are like-minded like you, but that you need to have friends that, that are anchored in the word yeah. because they're going to be able to sharpen you and you're going to be able to sharpen them. And there's a danger in trying to do that with someone that isn't iron against iron because one of you will be damaged. Like there is a need to be able to, like the rest of what we talked about Proverbs before, of challenging, uh, you know, saying challenging words when you see someone going against what their faith professes. There's a need to, uh, to speak truth in life that sometimes hurts your friends. Um, out of love, that you care for them more than you care for their opinion of you, that's true friendship, right? When you yeah. care for them more than their, than their opinion of you, mm. that you push them towards Christ. But the only way that, that that depth of friendship can happen is if it's iron against iron. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, just, to, just to press on a couple of things here, um, just regarding about what we see through Christ's life and what friendship is in accordance with how Christ shows and shares with us what friendship is. Uh, I just want to hit a couple of these things home, and then we're going to get into our questions here for our panel. Um, but what do we see uh, about friendship as it relates to Christ showing us friendship with his life? So uh, how has Christ given us a definition of what friendship ought to look like or can look like? Uh, and so I like this. He was a friend of sinners. If you're writing, taking notes, you can jot this down. Uh, and the passages for that are Matthew 9, 11, uh, and then chapter 11, 16 through 19. So he was a friend of sinners, he kept his circle, so his, his uh, friend group, he kept his circle very tight. Uh, and so you see that in John 15, 14, and Matthew 10, too. Uh, he was truly intimate with even fewer than the 12. And so we think that Christ's group, his, his buddies, his 12 that he spent time with, we think of, of those as being his tight, intimate circle. Yes, he taught them, and he discipled them, and he uh, brought them on the journey, but he was even tighter with fewer than those, okay? And we see that actually in Luke chapter 5 uh, and Mark chapter 5, as well as Matthew chapter 17. So he was truly intimate with even fewer than the 12. And then uh, only one was actually considered to be his closest friend. And we see that in John chapter 14, 19, and 13. Only one was considered his closest friend. And how interesting is that? Is, is we, I think we, we go through life and we try to collect friends because the amount that we have tends to define who we are or how we might feel about ourselves. But Jesus, the Savior of the world, the Messiah, the one who is prophesied about, the one who came, lived, was dead, buried, and rose again for you and for me, his group was tight. It was even tighter than the 12 that he spent his ministry life with. And then finally, what do we see about Jesus is he had close friends outside of his group that he was discipling. Moms and dads, you are discipling your kids. Grandparents, you are discipling your kids, and you're also setting an example for their kids. That is your discipleship group. That is the group that you discipline, not punish, discipline. It's discipling, taking them on a journey. That is your group. But outside of your discipleship group, there's a few friends that you can have that can be close with you as you go on your journey, and Jesus had those. We actually see Jesus' closest friends outside of his group were Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. You can see that in Luke chapter 10 and John chapter 11. You see, with Jesus, when it comes to friendship, it's always about the quality, not the quantity. And, and I'm learning that. And if you, you've kind of watched my journey, but now you can't watch my journey because I'm not on social media anymore. But the reality is, is I came to a realization at 36, You're 37, 37 now. At 36 years old, you know, thanks to some good people in my life, my board, who's like, James, you need to put your phone in a safe. James, you need to change your phone number. James, you need to make some adjustments in your life. And I'm like, man, I don't like this, but I know you love me, so I'm going to follow some counsel uh, that I don't like, but you love me, so I'm going to walk forward in that. And it was life-changing, and it still is life-changing. 
making my circle smaller, realizing that maybe I affect a couple people in my life. That's what Jesus did. And from there, things changed as those people affected a couple people. So with Jesus, it was always about the quality, not the quantity. And just because we have Facebook friends doesn't mean we really have friends. Usually what happens is we've got friends on Facebook, yet I still end up moving people's pianos because the <laughs> Facebook friends aren't coming and moving pianos. It's a true story. And friendship is more of a cover. Oh, are you going to say something about that? No, I'm also just scratching. You're, but you also move pianos. That is not an advertisement, by the way, okay? All right. It is not. Uh, no, call me but if you, need, if you need a piano move, Ben is very strong, so call Ben. <laughs> <laughs> and Ben's on social media. <laughs> Ben's on social media. Yeah. They're going to find you, and they're going to yeah. make you move their pianos for them. Uh, friendship, and finally, friendship is more of a covenant than a contract, okay? So a covenant, it runs deeper than just letters on a piece of paper. Contracts, they can be broken. They can be nullified. They can be voided. Covenant is very different. A covenant is actually based on unconditional love, and that is a beautiful thing. It runs deep, and a good, true friend will challenge us, challenge us, champion us, correct us, and encourage us. Okay? So now that that's all out of the way, I, I don't, there's a whole pile of scripture verses. Uh, I don't know if, if one of the tech folks can just let those things run on the bottom of the screen um, just so you can put them down in your notes, maybe let them kind of blip through. There's some great passages to dig from, but uh, for the sake of time, let's look at our questions here. And I just want to ask you guys, and, you, and each of you can answer, or maybe one of you can answer, and we'll go through the list here. So what, number one is, what does friendship mean to you? And I think we'll start with Ben on this. What does friendship mean to you? I, um, personally, for me, is that it's, it's somebody that you feel, first of all, that knows you, because you, all, you always want to be known. And what I, like, to alliterate that, imagine somebody buys you a gift, and you're just like, oh, you know me so well. Like, you get that, that kind of feeling, Right. But there's, a, a behind that, there's an aspect of, you know, you are thought about, you are cared for, right? And, and there's a, a, a base layer of love from this person to you. And I think that that, like we were talking, where there's somebody who invests in you so that they can correct you. And I don't think you get that. You can have different levels of acquaintances, right? People that you know, maybe people that you know very well, but that don't have that door into your life or they haven't bought it or earned it somehow. You know what I'm saying? And not that it's all about you, that people have to come in and cater to you, um, because I think you could also be a bad friend, right? Where if, if some people try to come into your life and they notice that you're not doing something right and then they're like, hey, you know, like you, you're going down a destructive path, you're doing this, and uh, I'm just saying this, they, they were willing to make themselves uncomfortable for your sake, and then that is rejected by you, I think that, that you should run through your mind and say, am I a good friend, mm -hmm. right? Um, but what, yeah, so what does friendship mean to me? It's, it's somebody that can really just do that, that has invested the time to allow iron to be sharpened with iron. You, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's excellent. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate that. Um, Josh, uh, you know, what does friendship mean to you? Yeah, I think like Ben kind of just blew it out of the water there. I'll go second next time. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, yeah, same thing. Like, someone who's just able to, like, you know, just be there for you and is able to call you out on the things when things kind of get bad, you know? And, yeah, like, it could be an uncomfortable situation, like, whether it's yourself that's calling out one of your friends or one of your friends calling out you. For me, that's, like, that's a big thing for me and what I think friendship really means to me is just someone who's actually able to hold me accountable for my actions, the things I say, and vice versa. Hmm. To keep it short, really. That's good. Yeah. You want to say? What does it mean to you? Um, what does it mean to me? I would say what I know it doesn't mean. It's not a mentorship. Uh, oh, I think, that's good. I think for me, as I thought about this this week, and I, I'll get into a little more when I talk about my struggles, um, I think I'm really good at being a mentor. I think sometimes I struggle with friendships. Uh, my default is to mentor. I like to teach, I like to mentor, it's just my default position, and that's not the same thing as friendship. Friendship is this give and take. It's this piece where they're speaking life into you, and you're speaking life into them. It is a place that you are willing to, um, to sit with the hardest moments of your life and let someone into that. And that is the depth of friendship that I think sometimes we forget, especially when... Um, 
you, you may struggle with this idea that it's okay, I can do it. Um, you know, like I can do it on my own. And, but you need someone that you can sit with. Um, you need someone that knows those difficult parts of your own world. And so I think there's some of us you can fall into the category of you have lots of people that you're mentoring and not necessarily people that you're friends with. And um, there's a difference. The other thing I would say friendship, friendship is not your spouse. Um, your spouse, your relationship with your spouse, there's a definite, there's a part of it that is a friendship, but you need friends outside your spouse. So if you're married, there is actually a deep importance to have friends that are not just your spouse. I think sometimes when you're married, you, you think that person becomes your everything, but you need spaces outside of that relationship. Friendship is also not your family. You can be friends with your family, but you need friends outside of your family. And the reason why those things are such a big deal is because you need a different perspective. The people who are with you day to day, um, you know, you see the, the worst and the best sides of them, and you need sometimes someone with a different perspective to look at you and, and to be able to speak truth that, that those people might not be able to. So um, those are the things that I would like to say I think what friendship isn't. It's not just mentorship, and it's um, not your family and your spouse. It's outside of them. That's really good. Yeah, I echo that for sure. I echo that for sure. I think that's a very good perspective, and I, I completely agree. I love that. Having, uh, you know, you're hearing it from the married couple up here. Um, you know, having, having friends outside of your family unit, outside of your marriage, uh, are important. Uh, now, public service announcement, uh, I would encourage men to have be friends with men outside of their marriage and women to be friends with women outside of oh, marriage. Oh, yes. Otherwise, yes. things can that go sideways yep. yesterday, and that is not, a, we don't, we're not encouraging those things today um, or ever, actually. So uh, make sure that, you know, when you're... Yeah, not just today, not just ever. Today. Yeah, yeah, that's like a yeah. statement. At noon today, like, the time yeah. it's up, go, yep. it's a free-for-all. That's not true. Um, so, yeah, we really want to just encourage that. I think that those are really, all of you, those are really good perspectives, and I appreciate those perspectives. I think those are solid. So um, I'm going to put an open question out there then, uh, and whoever wants to answer this one can. So how have you been a good friend? Yeah, I'll go. Go for it. You got notes. I got notes. I got some notes, because if I don't have notes, I just... Josh like, is new at this. I am. I'm usually up here with a guitar, and I can sing, but now yeah. I have a laptop. Now you got to talk. I have to hold on to this thing. This is ridiculous. <laughs> How have I been a good friend? First of all, um, I've had some like, amazing, amazing people that have helped me walk through life especially over the last like five to six years and um, it's affected me greatly and that's something that I really want to be able to mirror in all my friendships um, so I looked at this as like kind of like you know like the interview questions like give me three of your greatest strengths and three opportunities so absolutely yeah, that's kind so of what are I your three greatest this. strengths of friendship my three greatest strengths of a friendship here we go um, I feel that I always encourage and uplift people um, for myself, like I know that God has gifted me and um, has kind of created me into like a natural born leader. Um, so being able to lift up people, um, you know, through their, through their trials or whether it's trials or not, um, that's one of, the, one of the things that I feel that makes a really good friend. Um, another thing is that I've got a pretty soft heart, which has led me to love others, uh, to love them in their messes and in their glories. It's another thing I have here that makes what I feel makes a really good friend. Um, and another thing that makes a really good friend, this is what I think is key. It's not just because I'm Newfie. Okay? You're what? Newfie. Excuse me, sorry. From Newfoundland. Oh. Canada. Where's your accent? Well, we'll talk okay. about that another, another day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll give my testimony one day. It'll be great. How do you, how do you okay. say testimony in Newfie? I'm going to... Just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, my last thing here. Having a really good sense of humor, I think that is super key because, like, I mean, let's be honest, like, we all have some friends that are, like, really uptight and you can't make a joke with them, even in, like, if times are tough and you just kind of, you know, give a little, a little nudge there for some humor and they're kind of just like, that's not what I need right now. Anyways, that's what I... <laughs> you gotta, but it is often what people need. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. And you got to be able to laugh and shake things off. There, there's definitely an aspect where, like, a friend can make fun of something that you're doing oh. to correct you. Like this, it's, but you tread lightly. You know your friends. Know your friends. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's true. Like but Josh, for example, I'll come into church one Sunday and he'll be up here leading worship and practicing and preparing, and I'll be like, "Man, you're looking fat today." I'll be like, "Thanks, Josh. I love you too." But I can do the same thing to him, and it's wonderful. It's a good time. We have a really good relationship. It's I good. think you and I. It's good. It's I think good. we all have a good it's relationship. Good. I, I always good. thought like 
Do you think Jesus had a sense of humor? Do you think he does have a sense of humor? He has the best sense of humor, actually. And if you read the scriptures, you will see that he is is so stinking funny. He's actually pretty sarcastic. He's very sarcastic. Yeah, Yeah, if you're like, no, sarcasm isn't from Jesus. Actually, Jesus invented sarcasm. And if you don't believe me, go read your Bible, and then you can prove me wrong. But that's your job, not mine. So, ha, Jesus is sarcastic. Ben. um, (laughs) So, I... I, um, I'll, I'll preface this a little bit by saying that, that I think that the, for, for a bit of my story, it's going to be short, but there's a verse that we were talking about in our community group last Wednesday about don't throw your pearls before swine, right? And so there's one of those cultural separations where it's not nice as a Canadian to think of somebody as a swine in your life, right? You mean to think of someone as a pig is not a good idea? Friends are not <laughs> swines. Swines are not friends, okay? So <laughs> here's what I mean. There was a time in my life where I was being a real jerk to my wife. Uh, there were some things going on. I was internalizing, and it was just one of those times where just things were just not good, and I was not being a, a good person, right? And then so what, what Kristen did is that she went behind my back and told on me to my friend. And my friend was, like, righteously angry for how bad I was behaving, I actually came over to the house and said, you and I, we're going for, you know, we're going for a drive. I've got, we've got to talk about some things. And then, so I went, um, because I knew he was right, right? You know, like when you know you're doing something, but you can't help yourself, but then somebody is like, Hey, so that is what I would call a pearl, right? They, they gave me that pearl. And I believe that by my accepting and, re- and recognizing like, hey, this person loves me, they are actually doing this um, very selflessly, like they don't really get any personal gain from it, they're doing it for my sake, there's something I've been doing wrong, I should listen. That was me not being a swine, and that was me being a good friend. So that would be, yeah. That's good, I like that, Ben, that's super, super good. Even though I wasn't the one being the good friend, you know what I'm saying? Right, like I had nothing to accept, offer in that moment. You were accepting quality friendship. But, uh, but that's a good thing to do. That's it's a good friend. It's good. It's good. So that's awesome. So um, next question for everybody. How have you been a bad friend? This is the stuff nobody likes to answer. Who was going Maria, first? You look like you were going to get Do you want me to go first? Me. Go, no, Maria. Uh, sure. I actually have an easier time answering this question than the question before that, to be honest. I had to really sit and think. I'm like, how am I a good friend? I don't know. Uh, again, because I think I default to mentorship, so I have to really think about relationships and friendships and what that looks like. Um, how have we been a bad friend? Um, I think sometimes I neglect to do what Josh said, which is have humor and fun with my friends. I think I'm pretty serious sometimes. I don't Just mean to. My, my daughter, Paige, actually, uh, Paige, Paige told me she was looking through pictures of our, our wedding, and I had one of my bridesmaids around my back, and uh, we had these big smiles, and we were goofing around. And she said something to me, and she's like, oh, Mom, I wish you'd do that now with your friends. And I had to really sit and think, oh, it's like, what do you mean by that? And she's like, I never see you goof around with your friends. I never see you just like, I always see you in serious conversations, but I never see you just have fun. And I, I've been actually thinking of that at last, I think it was probably about two weeks ago, really thinking about that, about the need for shared experience that is just lighthearted. Um, I have an easy time going very deep with people. I really suck at small talk. Anyone who knows me well knows that I'm really not good at talking about surface things. I, I tend to just dig in really deep. But I've really been challenged. I think people can go that direction and not go deep, and that's not healthy. But I think for me, uh, I'm learning and trying to learn how to be a good friend of just shared experience, just having fun, laughing more um, together, and uh, spending those moments. I think also a bad friend, I think I'm not great if you're not in crisis. Uh, Again, it's not because I mean to, it's just... My life, I think moms, if you're watching, you would understand this. James has a hard time. He's like, why don't you just call your friends? Like, why don't you just talk to them all the time? Why don't you just like, like, because my brain doesn't think about it. I'm so busy answering questions, making sure everyone's fed, making sure everything's done, making sure everyone's where they need to be, and and organizing things that I don't think about just checking in on my friends. If they tell me something's wrong, I am there. I am 100% there, I will be there, uh, but I'm not great at uh, checking in and just being a friend that's, that's 
present in day to day um, because again, I could give you all the excuses in the world, but really it's because I need to make priority to do it. And so that would be where I would say I am not a good friend. Okay, thank you for being honest. That's important. Um, you guys, what do you think? I'll go. I think like... Check your notes. Check my notes. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good thing I got a good sense of humor. <laughs> Fatty. <laughs> I just kidding. I love you. You know that. Um, how have I been a bad friend? I think one of the <laughs> oh man. I think one of the biggest things for me, and um, I, I find that sometimes I struggle with feeling that I deserve more of my friend's time. Okay. For an example. Um, I look at our worship team. There's times where I feel, as a leader, I'm like, hey, no, like, you know what, like, we haven't got these, song, these songs done yet. We're just going to keep pushing. It's like 9.30 at night, when really what I should have done was, like, we should have prayed, should have talked about it, and I should have respected that, you know, the people on my team, they also have families, they also have other things that they need to do, but for myself, you know, I struggle, I, and I still do, like every day is that like I struggle with feeling that I, I deserve more of their time when really it's not really it's not really healthy so yeah so I apologize to my, my worship team this is, this is a full confessional uh, Catholic edition uh, Father Speed James it's been real man yeah it's good your mic's off your mic's dead it's dead so Ben last last one here I'm gonna I'll change it that's okay. We're going to change batteries here uh, on this one. Maria can take my mic. Um, okay, so then uh, finally, last question before we close is, how have you learned, or what have you learned about biblical friendship? What have you learned about biblical friendship? And uh, Ben, you've got a microphone, so. That's right. Um, I, I think I've, I've kind of mentioned it a few times, is that realizing, you know, there's a difference between um, what we would consider as friends culturally and what the Bible says that a friend is, right? Like I find myself at kids' birthday parties whose parents I don't know because Caden matched a pair of shoes with this other kid in schools and now they're friends. And then, you know, and then you're in like a weird situation. But I think that you take that little kid mentality sometimes and you transfer it over into your adulthood, you know, like, hey, like I said, like, I work in this cubicle. Like, you work in this cubicle? Like, oh, hey, that's good enough. Let's be friends, right? And then you surround yourself sometimes unknowingly with bad company, right? You might think that someone's like a, a cool person to hang out with or to be friends until late in your life, but then later you realize they're a swine, you know? But, <laughs> and, and you feel like you don't want, yeah. But you feel like you don't want to separate that now because that would be mean or harsh to do. But I feel like, we, the, the, the biblical standard for what a friend is is actually very high, whereas we have lowered our standard and let sometimes toxic people into our lives to the point where, where you're in that state, it starts to be blurred as to, you know, what, what that standard is, right? And so what have I learned? I've learned that um, some people aren't worth my pearls. And, and, that, and that's harsh to say. You feel bad saying it, uh, but it's biblical, at the same time, right? Um, and love and kindness are different than friendship. It is, yeah. yeah. Like being loving and kind and, and uh, supporting the community, supporting people that are in your lives, that is what we're mandated to do as Christians, but that is different than friendship. It is, yeah. And then you can have some, and then there's also a difference even between a very strong acquaintance, somebody that you just hang out with and make you feel good, you're happy all the time, but you never go deep. That's fine as long as you know that that's what they are. And I think that sometimes, sorry, we confuse those lines. We think our acquaintances are our friends, and that's when we feel people have let us down, and then that's when we start to get angry with people, and, you know, yeah. That's good. I like that. Uh, Josh, you want to take that one? Uh, Absolutely, so yeah. what have you learned about biblical friendship? What I've learned about it, one thing is that, like, from, like, a biblical friendship standpoint is that surround yourselves with others that are also Christ-like has been a big thing for me. Um, and it's funny because like God kind of gave me a word with that and I thought about how the relationship was between Jesus and Judas okay 
So everyone kind of knows, well, if not, I'm going to give you a little summary here. So, Ju so Judas, like, betrays Jesus on the day he was crucified. And so, but one of the things I was challenged with was, like, okay, so if Jesus knew that at the beginning, that, okay, so this guy is going to betray me. But the thing is, is that Jesus still, I don't, I don't know if it was, like, if it, Jesus just betrayed grace in that or what it was. I don't know, maybe you can kind of help me with it, but... Jesus still allowed Judas to walk with him, like to walk with him and his disciples. Judas was there when Jesus fed the 5,000. Judas, Judas was there when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. So I think like from my own personal standpoint of a biblical friendship is just understanding that you're going you're gonna to have friends that walk in and out of your lives. And whether you know it or not, I still feel that like, betraying kind of what Jesus did with Judas, just allowing it, allowing him to still walk in those aspects. Like, you got to think that must have, like, boosted Judas's faith like crazy, being able to experience those kind of things, right? And, um, yeah, like, that, that's, that's kind of one of the biggest things for me, and God has really challenged me with that this weekend. Because, I mean, that I know that I definitely have friends that are in and out of my life, and, yeah, I'm kind of challenged with just, like, okay, well, maybe, like, should do what Jesus did. Because, I mean, ultimately, that's kind of our goal, right? Is to be more like Jesus. Yeah, he, he, he met Judas where he was at. Judas was on the journey w with Christ, which is fascinating. He saw those things absolutely bolstering to his faith. Um, and even though Jesus knew what Judas was going to do, even before everything all happened, yeah, he, Jesus still chose to be the friend. Yeah, that's right. Jesus yeah. still chose to be the friend to Judas. And even though there was that betrayal, even the betrayal with the kiss, um, Jesus still chose to have a heart of compassion and care for Judas, even in the midst of the betrayal. Now, did, did Jesus have boundaries? Did he have, um, you know, you know uh, was there consequence? And oh, yes, there was, of course, all those things. But Jesus still chose to rise above the circumstance and uh, endeavor to be a part of Judas' life, which is unreal. Given the, the degree of betrayal that led to death, that is a fascinating thing that we can glean from. Uh, biblical friendship. Oh, I'm going to drop my phone. Oh, thank you, honey. You're welcome. I appreciate that. That's because I love you. Oh, thanks. Uh, okay, I'm going to read, actually, what I've learned from biblical friendship. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, starting in verse 9. It says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Mm. Also, if two lie down together and they keep warm, how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Hmm. Biblical friendship is exactly that. It's we're not meant to do it alone. I think you never really notice that you need friends until you need friends. Yeah. And usually by the time you realize you need friends, you don't have the energy to make friends. And so there's a need to actually do what this says is you are supposed to walk life with other people. Mm -hmm. And biblical friendship means everything we've already talked about, but it's really that, that you need someone there that can pick you up when you fall, and you need to be the person that can pick someone up when they fall. That's good. That's excellent. Uh, worship team, I'll call you guys up, and you can, uh, we'll close up with, some, with a song here. Um, but, but really, when it comes down to it, what we draw from the scriptures, what we see in the scriptures, uh, really paints a beautiful picture for what it is to have a, have a friend, be in a friendship, but also be a friend to others. Uh, and you know what? Maybe, maybe there's some, uh, you know, dealing with that you have to walk through right now. Maybe some of this stuff is sparking some things in your life. Maybe, you're, maybe you've realized, man, like, you know what, my, my friend base is far too broad. Uh, maybe I've got a ton of acquaintances, but I don't actually have any real friends. Uh, you know what, I've never had actually anybody come alongside and, and challenge me on things before. Hmm, maybe that's an issue. Uh, or perhaps you're in a position where you're saying, man, I don't have any friends, and you've done a very good job at pushing people away for most of your life, and you aren't, you aren't easy to be a friend with. So maybe there's some reckoning that has to happen and some processing. But here's the cool thing. Here's the answer to all of that when it comes to processing and reckoning and dealing with and, and understanding these things. This is, this is what I want to share with you this morning because it's so important and so true. You can go to God who is alive, who is here with us. You can go to God and say, God, I think maybe I've messed this up. 
Uh, I actually don't know what I've been doing. I've actively pushed people away. I'm terribly insecure. Uh, I've caused so much hurt and brokenness and pain. I don't even know how to unwind any of these things. Uh, I am actually in the midst of chaos and disaster. I don't know what to do. You can go to God with all that. He's not going to run away from you. He's far bigger than that. And you can say, I need your help. And what's really cool, and this is true, what's really cool is that if you go to God with sincerity of heart, if you go to God with honesty, if you go to God with depth and truth, I promise you, when you make the requests of your heart known to him, he's faithful to answer. He's faithful to answer. You can go to him and say, I am a mess. I don't know how to deal with this issue of friendship in my life. And something's going to start happening. You know, the Holy Spirit, it's the unseen portion of God that ministers to us. When we, when we say we need your help, God, he is always faithful to come in and bring restoration and bring healing and do an incredible work that is life-giving. It might mean that there has to be some deconstruction along the way. In fact, it might even mean that a faulty foundation has to be completely torn out and it might seem like a very challenging time to walk through while you're going through that. But know this, when you put your life in the hands of God, when you put your life in the hands of God, there is no one more capable than him to build you up, to restore you, to minister to you, to rebuild the foundation that's been ruined and to give you life and to give you love, and to give you hope. So I want to end with that. Let's close with a word of prayer, and we're going to close in one last song. Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We love you, and we praise you. And we thank you that your son Jesus is indeed a friend to sinners. We thank you, Jesus, that you've met us where we are at. While we are a mess, you still chose to die for us. We thank you that because of you, we can have life and life in abundance. And Lord, I just ask right now that everybody who's watching, the folks that are here, upstairs, downstairs, everywhere in the farm, I just ask, Lord God, that you begin touching hearts right now and you stir up a, a desire for biblical friendship. Not a billion friends so you can have importance on Facebook, but rather, Lord, instill in us a desire for biblical friendship. Those places where we can go deep those places where we can have intimacy, those places where we can see a reflection of you. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In your name we pray, amen. Folks, thanks for joining us today.